the Lord has led me to talk about God's laws of prosperity and success. And the Holy Spirit guided me to go through the whole Bible and write down, uh, taking from the scriptures, all that God commands about money. And he has a lot of different commands about money. We're going to go through them. I'm going to move through them. I'm not necessarily going to read each scripture, but I'm going to pull the truth out of that scripture, quote where it came from, and then you could always go back and read the exact verse because it would take too long to go through, read all the verses. So what I did is I pulled out God's laws that govern prosperity and success, different things he said to do in regards to money. So to start with, one of the number one ways to be successful or prosperous is to be led by the Holy Spirit. Romans 8, 14, for as many as are led by the Spirit, they are the sons of God. Another thing is to speak to your finances. Mark chapter 11, verse 22 to 24, speak to the mountain. Another thing that a lot of people don't know, but you can also speak to the earth. Jeremiah 22, 29 talks about earth, earth, hear the word of the Lord. And the earth also helped the woman in the book of Revelations. The earth is here to help you. God created the earth to help you and to be a blessing. And that's where your wealth comes from is actually from the earth. The next one is meditate on God's laws days and night. Uh, Joshua 1 8 this book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth but thou shalt meditate there in day and night that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein then thou shalt make thy way prosperous and then thou shalt have good success also says the same thing in Psalms 1 2 <clears throat> also says in Psalm 37 uh, to delight in the Lord also uh, in Joshua 1 8 another thing you, you're meditating in God's law but you're also not to let it depart out of your mouth. So you have to meditate in God's law, and then you also need to meditate. You have to let it come out of your mouth. And then you need to observe to do whatever you're meditating and speaking about. You have to do those things, Joshua 1, 8. Another thing is in Haggai, they were, you have to put God's house above your house. You have to be concerned about the house of the Lord. It's not necessarily a church building. Back then it was the temple. But putting uh, where God's people meet, that's considered the temple of the Lord. When all of us meet together, wherever we meet and putting that above your own house, because he said he put holes in their bags because they were not putting God's house first. Uh, Deuteronomy chapter 28 talks about and it shall come to pass that shall hearken diligent in the voice of the Lord thy God to observe to do his commandments, which I command this day that the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all nations of the earth. And all these blessings shall come upon thee and overtake thee, if thou shalt hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. So another thing is that obedience to God's word and his voice attracts prosperity. Now, now these, this comes from the law, but these are still very um, important for us to take heed to. One is don't lend your money with interest. People may not know this, but you're not supposed to lend to other people your money with interest. Another thing, don't take bribes. Like if you're a lawyer or a judge or whatever position, do not take a bribe. Basically, someone giving you money to do what they want, and then you don't do what's right before the Lord. Another thing in the law, Exodus 20, 17. So don't take bribes is Deuteronomy 16, 19. And don't lend your money with interest is Deuteronomy 23, 19 and Psalms 15, 5. Another thing that's really important is not to covet your neighbor's house, wife, servants, animals, or anything that is your neighbor. Exodus 20, 17. Um, something that's also important that Jesus taught was to give your alms or gifts to the poor in secret. Matthew 6, 1 through 4. Deuteronomy chapter 23, uh, verse number 7 says, don't be hard hearted or tight fisted toward the poor. So it's really important if you're going to prosper that you, uh, you'll you find a lot of these things I'm going to be going through is that God is very concerned about the poor and taking care of the poor. The righteous pay back what they are borrowed. Uh, Psalms 37, 21 and Exodus 22, 14. If you, lend, if, you're, if you lend, if you get any money lent to you, it's important you pay it back. And that's something very important before the Lord. I'll uh, pull up the verse in uh that it comes from psalms 37 verse number 21 let me pull it up here 
So Psalms 37, verse number 20 says, The wicked borroweth and payeth not again. So it's important that if you borrow, you pay it again. Otherwise, God considers you wicked. Also, we are to lend to many nations and not borrow. We're supposed to be the lender, not the borrower. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse number 12. Ephesians 4, 28, don't steal. If you want to prosper, you can't steal anything. Another one, Deuteronomy 15, 8, open your hand wide to the poor, lend, giving him whatever he needs. So if you have someone poor, lend, give them whatever they need. And like I said, you're going to find this a lot. There's a lot the Bible has to say about helping the poor. Luke 6.35 says, love your enemies and do good. Lend, hoping for nothing in return. Not only uh, are we not supposed to do usury, Jesus taught that just lend, give to people, and don't expect anything in return. Luke 3.14, John the Baptist said, be content with your wages. This is important. If you have a job and God gave you your wages, you don't want to be complaining or unthankful. He says, be content with your wages. That's something that John the Baptist actually commanded. Another thing that's really important, uh, 2 Chronicles 20.20, 20, he said, believe in the Lord, so shall you be established. Believe in his prophets, so shall you prosper. So listening to uh, true prophets of the Lord, the Bible says that you will prosper. And they ended up prospering when the prophecy went forth. They ended up uh, getting tons of money. They call it the Valley of Blessing. The whole enemy was defeated because they listened to the prophetic word of the Lord. They listened to a prophet. Another thing it says in 2 Chronicles uh, 26, 5, seek God and God will make you to prosper. So as long as you're seeking God, he'll make you to prosper. Another thing is, is Deuteron uh, Genesis chapter 12, verses 2 through 3. Uh, it was part of the Abrahamic blessings that I'll bless those who bless you and I'll curse those who curse you. So one of the things that to be blessed by God is it's important that you bless people that are Christians, especially that are in the covenant of Abraham. Uh, you can bring a curse on yourself if you curse them. Even if you think you're a Christian, do not curse anyone. Luke 16, 1 through 12, be a faithful and wise steward. Be faithful whatever God makes you a steward over, especially whatever money. Luke 16, 11 through 12, acknowledge you don't own anything, but you are stewards of God's money. Uh, Mark 10, 29 through 30, uh, be willing to leave everything for the gospel's sake and said you return a hundredfold. Family members, houses, lands, and when God called you to do it, do it. Uh, 2 Thessalonians 3.10, it says that uh, you must work if you want to eat. So working, you can't just not work. Genesis 12, 1 through 12, you know, God wants to bless you so you can be a blessing. So when you get blessed, just realize God wants you to be a blessing. And that means materially with your stuff in, in all ways, but in particular with your money, with your stuff. Another thing in Psalms 1, 2, if you want to prosper, it says, don't walk in the counsel of the ungodly. Don't stand in the way of sinners. Don't sit in the seat of the scornful, but delight in the law of the Lord. So you got to be careful who you hang out with and listening to sinners and ungodly and scornful people they can take from your wealth. Psalms 23, 1, the Lord must be your shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. John 3, 1, 2 says, Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health, even as your soul prosper. So your soul must prosper before you can actually prosper in the natural. 1 Timothy 6, 6 says, Be godly and content. Be content, just having contentment. God will make you wealthy and rich if you just can learn to be content. And it says, be content with be content with food and clothing uh, that God has given you. First Timothy 6, 8. First Timothy 6, 10. Don't love money. That's a big one. Uh, for the love of money is the root of all evil. Money's not the root of all evil. The love of money is the root of all evil. It says in First uh, Timothy 6, 10, don't covet after money. First Timothy 6, 17 says, if you're rich, don't be high minded. It also said uh, in 6, 17 also. Don't trust in uncertain riches, but in the living God, which gives us richly all things to enjoy. James 2, verses uh, 1 through 9 says, don't respect the rich above the poor. So I'm going through here and I'm teaching laws of prosperity. I'm moving through them. You know, I'm not spending a lot of time on each one because there's a lot of them. And I'm just going through and listing different things. So if I list anything, just check your heart. And you could go back and listen to this message if you're doing any of these. Uh, 
So James 2, 1 through 9, you know, don't respect the rich above the poor. That's important. You know, some people respect rich people above poor people. First Timothy 6, 18, do good. Be rich in good works. Be ready to distribute. First Timothy 6, 18, meaning share your stuff. First Timothy 6, 18 says be willing to communicate. That means be friendly, courteous, give liberally, and don't be selfish. Luke 12, 16 through 21, be rich toward God, meaning make sure you're giving because this is about a parable of a man that uh, said to his soul, soul, you've done a lot. And then he and then he um, stored everything up and he wasn't rich toward God and he got judged for it. So make sure you're rich towards God, meaning your tithe, your offering and giving to the poor, giving to the church. Luke 12, 29 says, don't have a doubtful mind about God taking care of you. Don't doubt that God will take care of you. Luke 12, 33, sell what you have and give gifts to the poor. So uh, I, I love to give to the poor something I've been doing since I became a Christian. I love it. I've been doing it. But here's talk about sell what you have, sell stuff and give to the poor. Matthew 6, 19, don't lay up for yourself treasures upon earth where moth and rust doth corrupt. Lay up for yourself treasures in heaven, meaning do things in your giving and uh, do what you do so that um, you're laying up treasures in heaven. And, and like I said, these are all different laws of prosperity. And if you do this, God will prosper and make you successful. He'll bless you. Matthew 6, 24 says only serve God. Don't serve money. You know, don't serve mammon. You'll love the one and hate the other, the Bible says. Matthew 6, 26 and 31 says take no thought what you eat, drink or put on the body. So don't even think about your, your needs. Just seek God first and he'll take care of your needs. Have faith in God to provide for all your needs. Matthew 6.30. Matthew 6.33. Seek first the kingdom of God, his righteous. You want to seek the kingdom of God and his righteous. And all these things will be added unto you. It also says don't think about tomorrow. Don't think about it. Don't worry about it. God, will, If God took care of you today, he'll take care of you tomorrow. Romans 13.8 says, Owe no man anything but to love one another. So we're to be the lender. We're not supposed to even be in debt. Psalms 1.12 says fear the lord now psalms 12 is a really uh awesome psalm when it comes to referring to the wealth of god and god making you rich and it and it gives advice on different things and i'll just read some of these um praise the lord blessed is the man that feareth the lord that delighteth greatly in his commandments his seed shall be mighty upon the earth the generation of the upright shall be blessed wealth and riches shall be in his house, and his righteousness en endureth forever. So, and it goes on to talk about uh, your heart trusting in the Lord and dispersing to the poor, which we'll all get into this now. So, Psalms 112 is really a powerful psalm about God blessing you. But it says, you know, delight greatly in the commandments of God. Um, I'll go back up here to the fear of the Lord, Isaiah 33, 6. The fear of the Lord is his treasure, you know, fearing the Lord. But being upright, being gracious, being full of compassion, being righteous, showing favor and lending, guiding your affairs with discretion, doing what's right before the Lord. That's This is all Psalms 112. Your heart's fixed, trusting the Lord. You disperse, you give to the poor. Psalms 112, verse 9. Uh, here's a really important one. Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse number 18. Remember God, that it is he that gives you power to get wealth, that he may establish his covenant, which he swore to thy fathers, as it is this day. So you have to remember that it's God that gives you the power to get wealth. Don't ever think you're getting wealthy by your own hand. No one can make wealth if God didn't give you a body, eyes, hands, uh, an opportunity, a job, a, a you know, different things in this nation. They, God gives us the power to get wealth. And if it wasn't for God, we wouldn't even have the power to make any money at all. Everything comes from God. So you always want to remember that and stay humble. Another thing it says, let others say continually, let the Lord be magnified, which have pleasure in the prosperity of a servant. You know, this is important, you know, be thankful that others are prospering and don't be jealous over them. And, and let you can say to other people, that let the Lord be magnified, that have pleasure in the prosperity of servant. You can say that about other people. Don't be jealous of if God's prospering someone. Isaiah 48, 18 says, allow God to teach you the prophet. You know, the Bible says that God will teach you to profit. Matthew 6, 3 says, don't let your left hand know what your right hand does when you give. 
I'm moving through these kind of quickly, but uh, I have them up on the screen. And like I said, you can go back and listen to this, but there's a lot of them. So I have to go through it to make sure we get through all of this. But this is talking about, you know, you're not making a big show. You just give and you don't even think about it. You give to the poor, you give to people and you don't make a big show about it. And you forget, you just let God watch what you're doing. Second Corinthians 9, 6 says, give bountifully. Second Corinthians 9, 7 is don't, don't give grudgingly. You know, if you're going to give, make sure, you know, the Bible says that God loves a cheerful giver. Well, Second Corinthians 9, 7, God loves a cheerful giver. So if you're going to give, make sure that you're cheerful about it, that you're not, you're not grudgingly about it. You know, because God watches your attitude, how you give, and God will bless you based upon that. Another thing is, is uh, ask God for money. First Kings three fifteen, or I'm sorry, First Kings three five through fourteen. When God asked Solomon whatever he wanted, he asked for an understanding heart to discern judgment. He did not ask for money. So ask God for wisdom, not money. And you could be like Solomon, and God will do exceedingly abundantly above all you ask or think, and He'll bless you. Proverbs 1. Now I'm going to go through some of the Proverbs because the Proverbs has a lot to say about prosperity, and money, and wealth. Solomon was obviously the richest man to ever live. It's estimated that he was his net worth was over a trillion dollars. So he had a lot to say. You know, God blessed him financially. Let's just, I'm going to, not necessarily going to quote the proverb, but I'm going to go through and just kind of give the gist of it. So it says, don't have one purse with sinners, meaning don't go into business uh, with sinners and don't do business deals with them. Don't walk with sinners. Don't be greedy of gain. Proverbs 1, 14, 15, and 19. Listen to wisdom. Proverbs 1, 20 through 23. Listen to the counsel of wisdom and don't despise the reproof of wisdom. Proverbs 1, 30. If you get reproved, be thankful. Don't be a fool. Proverbs 1, 32. Honor the Lord with your substance, with the first fruits of all your increase. This is important. When God blesses you, make sure you're quick to give a first fruits, which would be a tithe or an offering. Don't withhold that. Proverbs 3.13, find wisdom, get understanding. Um, Proverbs uh, 3.27-28, don't withhold good to them that is due when it is the power of your hand to do it. If you have it to pay your neighbor that day and don't say, uh, that you'll give it tomorrow. So if you have the money with you, God says you need to pay people what they're due and, and do good. And what's in your power, do it right then. Don't wait. Don't hold off. A lot of people hold off, say, oh, I'll do it later. I'll do it later. And they think they're good intention. But God says, no, if you have it, do it that day. Remember, these are all wisdom principles. If you want to prosper and be in and God bless you pro with prosperity, these are the different laws of prosperity. These are things that God has told us to do. The curse of the Lord is in the house of the wicked. Don't be wicked. God blesses the habitation of the just. Proverbs 3.33. Uh, don't commit adultery. If you commit adultery, it says strangers will be filled with your wealth and what you labored for. So if, if you commit adultery, it says all your wealth will be taken from you. Um, don't become a guarantee for a debt of obligation for your neighbor. Uh, Proverbs 6.1 and Proverbs 11.15. For a stranger also, meaning... Um, if someone needs a loan, don't, don't say, Hey, I'll, I will, uh, be an obligation or a guarantee for that loan. Hate evil, pride, arrogancy, the evil, evil way in the forward mouth, deceptive, corrupt, and perverse speech. You have to hate evil. Treasures of wickedness profit nothing. Make sure how you're getting your money. It's, you're not doing it through wickedness. Um, he that is negligent and idle will be made poor. So don't be negligent and idle. Make sure you're diligent. A diligent hand makes you risk. Proverbs 10, 4. Be diligent. Be just. Proverbs 10, 6. Only seek the blessing of the Lord to be rich. Proverbs 10, 22. The blessing of the Lord makes one rich. And he has no sorrow to it. Be generous and don't withhold from others. Be liberal in your giving. Proverbs 11, 24 through 25. God blesses him who doesn't hold back but sells his corn. So this is talking about someone that has a harvest and then they held it back. But you're supposed if you have a harvest, you want to share that harvest or you want to sell it, especially if people have need. This was really important back then because uh, people were dependent upon that food when the, when they would do those harvests. Also said, don't get wealth by vanity. Vanity, meaningless idols, vain religions, customs, meaningless talk. Proverbs 13, 11. 
gather wealth by love by labor gather your wealth by labor so remember these are all ways that god will use to make you wealthy if i say one of these you know check your heart and make sure you're doing this uh, be prepared to leave an inheritance to your children's children proverbs 13 22. the wealth of the sinner is laid up for the just sinners will give their money to just people god will get into your hands all work leads to pro profit proverbs 14 23. if you just talk it will only lead to lack need and poverty proverbs 14 23. he who has pity on the poor lends to the lord and what he gives repay him here's another one about the poor be diligent in your thoughts god is concerned about how you think this is connected to your prosperity a lot of people don't realize that but god is concerned about what you think in your mind what you think in your mind can determine uh god blessing you proverbs it says that proverbs 21 5 says the thoughts of the diligent tend only to plentiness but of everyone that is hasty only to want so don't be hasty be diligent in your thought life and don't be hasty um whoever doesn't listen to the cry of the poor will cry themselves and not be heard so if you see a poor person and they're crying and they need help make sure you help them do you see how much in here is about helping the poor he who loves pleasure wine and oil shall not be rich but poor don't love these things don't love money don't love wine pleasure oil a fool spends their treasure on oil uh that back then that was an, a big deal that you know the different oils be humble and fear the lord proverbs 22 4. The rich rule over the poor and the borrow is servant to the lender. That's why uh, God wants you to be rich. And he, and if you are, are borrowing from other people, it makes you a servant to them. Have a bountiful buy and give your bread to the poor. Proverbs 22, 9. Here's another one about the poor. He, that, who, he who oppresses the poor to increase their riches shall come to want. It's, it's, you can see God is very concerned about the poor. And the richest man that ever lived probably was really helping the poor if you read all these um, proverbs he who gives to the rich shall come to want so it said look you know some people give to the rich when they should be given to the poor like why does the rich man need your stuff we're not talking about giving offerings things like that we're talking about you know maybe you're trying to find favor so you're giving to some rich man and they don't need anything don't rob the poor proverbs 22 22 through 29 don't labor to be rich so you labor and allow god to make you rich Remember, God made Solomon rich. These are the laws of prosperity. And if you do these things that I'm listing here, this all comes from the Bible, that God will prosper you and make you rich. He'll make you wealthy. He'll take care of you. So don't labor to be rich, Proverbs 23, 4. Don't set your eyes upon riches. It says they take wings and fly away. Set your eyes upon the Lord, the kingdom of God. Let God make you rich. Don't get all caught up in riches. He who increases uh their substance by usury and unjust gain gather it, it for them that will pity the poor usury is putting like i said earlier putting your money out and getting interest on it god says don't do that don't put it out for unjust gain or usury uh, to get interest on your money proverbs 28 19 don't follow vain persons these are all connected to prosperity don't be hasty to be rich proverbs 28 20 so i'll look that one up here Let's see here proverbs 28 20 a faithful man shall abound with blessings but he that makes hit haste to be rich shall not be innocent uh he who gives to the poor shall not lack here's another promise if you give to the poor god says you won't lack he who hides his eyes from the poor shall have many curses, meaning you don't even want to look at their situation. You don't want to do anything about it. You hide your eyes. He said you're going to be cursed. He who gives to the poor shall not lack, but he who hides his eyes shall have many curses. Proverbs 29, 7. Now, this is interesting uh, verse uh, Ecclesiastes 2, 27. God gives the sinner travail to gather and heap up that he may gather that he may have to give to him that is good before God. So being good before God and doing what's right, God is saying, look, the sinner, he's put it on them to travail and to gather and heap up, and then God will give it to you, which is interesting when I preached this last weekend about when the children of Israel went to the promised land, it said they they had done all the houses, had all this stuff, and they went in and they took their wealth from them, their money, their gold, their sheep, their, their property, their houses, and... And God said, because they were wicked, they were doing evil things for the Lord. So 
the Lord sent the children of Israel to take it and in God this and this is what the Bible has to say about it. Ecclesiastes 10 20 curse not the rich in your bedchamber. This is important, you know. Uh, don't curse rich people, don't be jealous of them. Now, here this talks about what we should do towards ministers. First Corinthians 9 7 allow others to pay for spiritual warfare or being a minister. It says who goes to war at their own expense. So, you know, help ministries, especially ones that are fighting the good fight of faith. Um, 1 Corinthians 9, 11, don't, as a minister, don't be afraid to accept money from those you are ministering to. The Bible says, 1 Corinthians 9, 9 through 10, don't muzzle the ox that treads out the corn. This is talking about a minister going in and laboring, and you want to take care of the minister financially. Uh, the minister should feed the flock of God and take oversight but not by filthy lucre. That's dishonorable, selfish gain. Some people, they're not really feeding the flock of God. And what this refers to by feeding is feeding the word of God and feeding them uh, the ways of God. And it says, and don't do it for filthy lucre. Some, some ministers do it for money's sake. Uh, Galatians 6, 6 to 8, give where you are fed, which just means if, uh, if you are being fed somewhere, you don't want to give your money or your tithe and offering to another location. You want to give your tithe and offering your money where you're being fed spiritually. James 5, 1 through 4, pay your workers what are they what they are due. Now this, now, this can be really a big deal. You can get a curse on yourself if you don't pay your workers and you hold money back. I mean, there's a curse. You know, James goes into it and he talks about this. This is um, really important to consider, you know, especially if you have your own company. Because God really is concerned. It says, go to now you rich men, rich men, weep and howl for your miseries that shall come upon you. Your riches are corrupted and your garments are moth-eaten. Your gold and silver is cankered. And the rest of them shall be a witness against you and shall eat your flesh as it were fire. You have heaped together. You have heaped treasures together for the last days. Behold, the hire of the laborers who have reaped down your fields. Which is of you kept back, back by fraud, crieth, and the cries of them which have reaped are entered into the ears of the Lord of Sabbath. You have lived in pleasure on the earth, you've been wanting to nourish your heart in a day of slaughter. You've condemned the just, and you have condemned and killed the just. He doth not resist you. So, this is talking about a rich man not paying his labors what they're due. Matthew 21, 13, don't be a robber in God's house. You know, it said, my house is a house of prayer and you made it a den of thieves. You know, that's selling things in the house of God and turning it into merchandise. So, you know, the ho God's house is supposed to be a house of prayer. You know, turn it into a place of merchandise. Luke 12, 15 says, take heed and beware of covetousness. A man's life consisteth not in the abundance of the things which he possesses. So watch out for covetousness. Don't covet other stuff, you know. Another thing is whenever you do good, do good to all men, especially to them that are the household of faith, Galatians 6.10. So what this is saying is whenever you have opportunity, do good, especially a Christian. So not only do you take care of ministers, but if you have Christian brothers and sisters and you have an opportunity to help them out, help them out. Uh, it says in Hebrews 13.6 uh, that we are to boldly say, the Lord is my helper. I will not fear what man shall do to me. This is in reference to... Um, finances when you go back and you read that and he's talking about god you know making you know saying like look don't be if, you know the lord is your helper and don't worry if you're in a financial situation he'll take care of you matt mark 10 where i can look that verse up before we move on and just want to read this one real quick out of hebrews 13 let your conversation be without covetous. Verse number five, be content with such things as he has said. For he has said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. So here he's talking about don't be with half covetous, be content. And he says, God will never leave you. He's referring to taking care of you financially so that we may boldly say the Lord is my helper. I will not fear what man should do to me. Uh, put the gospel first. This is really important. If you want to be blessed financially, make sure the preaching of the gospel, you're putting the gospel first. Jesus paid a heavy price so the gospel can be preached. Do everything we can to spread the gospel. Either preach the gospel, help those that are preaching the gospel. But this is one of the first things we should put on our, on our um, minds. Okay, also Galatians 3, 7 through 14, it says, Know that it is only by faith you inherit the blessings of Abraham. Now, the blessings of Abraham uh, are referring to many different blessings, but 
when you're blessed, it refers to your finances, your wealth, your health in all areas. Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health, even as your soul prospers. But uh, God has redeemed you from the curse of the law. And many of those curses were for you to be financially stricken and not to have any money. So God has redeemed you from the curse of the law. But, to, but one of the most important ways to be blessed financially is you have to realize it comes by faith. You have to believe God by faith for him to bless you financially. And you have to keep track of all these things I'm listing here. These are all very important things you must do. Not giving your money out to usury, repaying your debts, uh, giving to the poor, giving in secret, putting God first. Don't let your left hand know what your right hand does. You know, don't be hasty, be rich. And, you know, be, you know, take care of ministers, take care of those that are preaching the gospel. These are very important things. Another thing is uh, thank God for everything. Be thankful for everything. God will bless you. God will bless you more and more. Who wants to give to a stingy, unthankful person? And then uh, last but not least, Revelation chapter 3, verse number 18. This is Jesus talking. And um, I'm going to read this whole thing here because it's talking about this church. And, um, you know, he says, if you look at this right here, it says, verse 17, here, I'll pull it over. He says, he that is near here in the Spirit say, churches, verse 14, unto the angel of the church to lay the scenes right. These things, things saith the amen, the faithful and true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. I know thy works, that thou art neither cold nor hot. I would that thou art cold or hot. So then because you are lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will spew you out of my mouth. Because you say, I am rich and increased with goods and have need of nothing. And knowest not that thou art wretched, miserable, poor, blind, and naked. So let's talk about someone that's rich and they think they got everything. I don't need anything. You don't realize, I don't care how much money you have. You're, you always need God. You always need God. You never make a statement like this because you've increased in goods. No. You always need the Lord. And then look what Jesus says. I counsel thee to buy of me gold tried in the fire that you may be rich. Because true riches comes from God. It's not just money. It's wealth in the spirit. It's, it's you know, a faith is considered like gold and, and wisdom is like rubies and diamonds. You know, God's wealth is more in his faith and who you are, the character, having the Holy Spirit, having Jesus going to heaven, having the kingdom of God. This is the true wealth of God, not just because you have a big house, a nice house and cars and a big uh, loaded bank account. Yeah, God wants to do those things. But if you're just going to say you've increased in goods and I'm rich and I don't need anything, that's not going to make God happy. So uh, he says. I counsel thee to buy of me gold tried in the fire, that thou mayest be rich, and white raiment, that thou mayest be clothed, and that the shame of thy nakedness do not appear. And anoint thine eyes with eye salve, that thou mayest see. As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Be zealous, therefore, and repent. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come into him and sup with him and he with me. To him that overcometh will I grant to sit with me in the, my throne, even as I also overcame and sat down with my father in his throne. He that hath an ear to hear, or he that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. So God is concerned about all of these things. And all of these things right here are important to God. So I just went in and I listed them kind of fast. And I kind of gave you the scripture. I didn't quote every scripture. But I'm here to help you. And you know, what true prosperity is and success is, you know, if you get rich and you have a lot of money, but then you start trusting in that and you don't spend time with God and you just start, you know, just living in pleasure and, and not being fair to your laborers and not giving them what's due to them. And you're, and you're lending your money with usury and you're not helping the poor. God's not going to be happy with you. You're not taking the church. You're not taking care of ministers. You're not taking care of your fellow believers. These things are very, very important to God. You know, you don't steal. You're not coveting anything that belongs to your neighbors. But God wants you to, you know, put him first, his kingdom first. And God will add all these wonderful things to you. Solomon did not seek to be rich. He was actually looking for wisdom and God made him rich.
because he wasn't looking for it. He didn't ask for it. Wasn't greedy. So hopefully this helps you and that you learn some of the things from God. I know I went through and it took me a while to, to find all these. And this is a very exciting study because this is God's pathway to true wealth and to make you wealthy. Because God does want to bless you and bless you financially. But it's important that you listen to all of these things that I listed here.